Hello. I wasn't really expecting to be on again before the usual Friday live stream, but here we are. And um, it's because I have a new project for two reasons. I have a new project, a book project that I wanted to tell you about. Um, Because it's exciting to share, you know, when you have something exciting project-wise. Um, it's also adds to the excitement to share the news, I think. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And the other thing is that um, the impromptu bonus live that I did on Sunday, I think it was, um, I wasn't expecting anybody really to be around to watch that. But as, as it worked out, a few people did watch it afterwards. So I kind of thought... Well, maybe I'll do another live painting session on the same piece because uh, with some of the uploads, you get the impression that all the work is done very fast and very fluidly with no problems along the way because uh, some of the shorter content, you're cutting out some of the slower passages of things. And then there's things like... Uh, time-lapse shots where you're making speeding the shots up a little bit so it looks like you're painting very very fast and everything's going like you know super duper for you so I think it's nice in a way although I didn't you know I wasn't sure if anybody wanted to see it or not it's no harm to show a few really slow sessions that so, you know, art, like everything else in life, has a pace and the pace of it changes. Sometimes you're painting fast. Sometimes you're just sitting around thinking. Sometimes you're looking at the thing. And sometimes you're um, painting slowly and methodically, you know. So uh, I, it might be a slow and methodical thing to do. I don't know. Sometimes you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but one thing that's going to happen that's going to be weird is... I wanted to talk about uh, the other project I'm doing because this I think of finishing painting an oil painting like this as very much a project because an oil painting is like a bigger commitment you know I want to actually put out a little bit of paint as I'm talking to you here so let me just put my palette up where you can see it for a minute uh, can't quite fit everything in and shot I'm hoping that the the uh, video quality is a bit better today because it has been terribly dark. But today I have a little light shining directly on this, which I think will improve the picture a lot. And uh, the colour as well. So hopefully that works. It's nice to see the thing I'm working with properly, isn't it? And I do have limitations, which, you know, you always have to work with limitations. But one of my limitations is that the camera that I'm using, it's a phone camera, and I cannot access or lock or change the focus on it while I'm streaming, while I'm live streaming, which is quite, um, quite a pain in a way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking for rat here on the table. It's quite a pain because it goes in and out of at will and I can't change lighting or anything like that the way I could if I had full control of the camera. So, uh, but I think that might be a little bit better today, hopefully. Um, So it, it's going to be weird because I'm going to be painting, but I'm talking about this other project as well. So I'm a bit split up in a couple of directions and you're already a bit split up if you're filming something. Because uh, you're thinking about trying to talk to viewers as well while you're painting. So it's all over the place. So apologies. This is why I um and ah a lot. I do anyway. But I'm gathering my thoughts sometimes or between two different conflicting things. The reason I'm talking about that is that... Uh, the two projects now, the painting project, and the reason I call it a project is it can go on for quite a long time. It can take me, um, I average about two or three weeks to do my painting. So it's much slower, it's much more a projecty thing than, you know, working in a sketch pad or even 
working with the gouaches, which I quite like doing. Uh, it just takes longer to get uh, paint doing things that you want it to do. And then the other project that is going to be difficult to talk about the two things at the same time and paint. It's like a juggling act here today. Uh, but I so want to talk about it. That's why I came on. Because I'm so excited about it. Uh, I'm doing another book. I have two books under my belt. <laughs> I never, you know, thought I'd be an author. But I, I love books. And um, uh, I always thought I'd love to be able to write a book. But didn't think I would be able to. And um, I actually have other people to thank for this because several times I've had other people saying you should write books, you should write books, uh, because I always seem to be somebody that has uh, some sort of story <laughs> or sees things in a kind of a narrative way that, you know, I put things together with the beginning, middle and end kind of way of seeing life. And uh you know, I think people recognize that some people are just natural uh, bookish types. And my whole approach to life has been based on books because I read a lot more than I actually talk to people. So I always expect people to make sense. I always expect somebody's story to have a beginning, middle and end. And it doesn't, you know, not until they pop their clogs at the end. Um, but let's see, we need some of our little medium out might make this one into a podcast for you folks because although i'm painting doing something visual there's a lot of chatting in this one and there was in the last one this is a bonus bonus live stream <laughs> which, which means a bonus live stream a mega extra bonus live stream after the bonus live stream because of the sunday one but in the sunday one i know there'll be a lot of ums and ahs in it so i saved you uh, from having to listen to it as a podcast but I'm really working hard I'm not going to um and ah as often in this one so that I can make it a podcast for you. because you might be somebody with a life doing your own thing painting in the studio and just wanting to listen or out for a walk or I don't know doing the garden or lying with your eyes closed relaxing you know on your day bed or your lounge or your chaise longue or whatever you like to call it um or whatever you know so i'll try and do that so it's a very chatty one but it's also about the second project and the second project is um i said i wouldn't own it, didn't i <laughs> you'll still get some ums and ums the second project is the book so i'm going to tell you about the book and this idea came to me as I was out jogging, and sometimes uh, ideas arrive fully formed on a jog. And it's as if they arrived out of the blue, but I know that they have been percolating in my uh, unconscious, I suppose, really, my unconscious mind in the background. And then they emerge, bing, fully formed into your conscious mind suddenly. That's uh, how, you know, a creative idea would work for a lot of people, I suppose. The tinkling is me drinking tea through a screen. Don't even ask why, it's very boring. It's not a story that people find interesting. I don't think those kind of stories. Um, but uh, the book... I said, yes, I said, as I was jogging, a book. I want to make a book of this. And this that I'm making a book of is the uh, story about the cozy ant house. So I think I'll call it that. So just That's the working title at the moment, anyway, the cozy ant house. I don't know if I did that with the right brain. You see, this is the problem when you're thinking about two things at the same time. I was trying to mix a nice vibrant yellow, but I don't know if I did it with the right colours. So, 
If you have watched previous live streams in the last few weeks, you would have seen me messing about with terrariums, closed terrariums. Yeah, see, look, this green I'm mixing now looks completely different, doesn't it? I have more yellow and see, does it still look different? It's different. Um, the closed terrariums were very inspiring for me. And a terrarium is just, you know, it's a little collection of plants inside a container of some sort. And, um, Hello in chat. Thanks for dropping in. And uh, so I had these closed terrariums and they were the first ones I've ever made. And oh, I really loved doing them. They had lovely mosses that I collected in them. And they became like a little kind of tableau. And I decided then to try to see, uh, you're supposed to be able to sustain life and you make a little bio system of them. Uh, after maybe like a week or so with the plants established, it finds its own little way of making, recycling the air through the plants and everything else. That's how we get air, isn't it? You know, uh, the whole planet is like a bio ecosphere, you know, whatever sort of system you want to call it. And so is a little closed terrarium. So I put in little things to help the soil. There are little things called springtails that you put in. And they help the soil not to just turn into dark mush because you need, if you have a little planet, you need certain sorts of life to get the balance in the planet. It's like a harmonious painting. It has to have certain things happening in it. And so this is why in a painting I'm doing sort of pulling some things out and pushing some things back all the time. Today I'm trying to pull out the colour of the green a little bit more. Whereas the last day I was pushing it back with that colour. And if I can find it in my little twist of tin foil, which I had on earlier, and if you see it vanished, I'll show it to you. Um, I was pushing it back with my neutral grey that I had collected on the last session from all the leftover paint, which made a wonderful neutral grey. Oh, there it is. So... Uh, Pushing things out, put, putting things back, keeping everything in balance, which is what a, what an ecosystem is about, balance between uh, different forms of life, you know. So I put in, into the terrarium, I put in these little tiny creatures that are good for the soil, little creatures called springtails. And these springtails keep the soil nice instead of uh, having it go turn black and mushy and too wet and everything. It can be a very wet environment in a terrarium. It's a bit, think, rain foresty. But it's so, it was so fascinating. And I, I put the links to these things underneath the, the live streams where I did that in because they were actually the genesis, if you like, of... Um, the idea for the book and I when I started doing this painting I was saying I want to move on from doing these drawings that I did because I did drawings of the terrarium which were so enjoyable and I said I want to move on from doing these drawings uh, on a very small scale and work on big stuff bigger stuff not just like big bigger in scale but like of landscapes, of the bigger world, if you know what I mean. So, sorry, my tummy is going, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> you probably didn't hear it. I probably got away with it, but just in case, I apologize. So, uh, I said I wouldn't say, eh, uh, didn't I? It's impossible not to. Particularly when you're thinking your way through the sentence. 
which I'll have to do if I write my book. I have to think my way through sentences. But you see, the book, some of the book is done already because the drawings that I did for the terrarium are going to feature in the book and I'm going to do some more drawings as well. And the book is a little story because it's a story that came out of like what happened through my experience of having terrariums and uh, finding out about what insects you can put into a closed terrarium and uh, those insects life cycle and all this kind of thing. I was reading a lot about that and absolutely fascinated by the whole thing. This is some of the thing with anything arty or creative. Your uh, fascination is like a mini obsession that you get with something. <laughs> it makes you just pursue it just out of interest, you know, and you keep going. And then, you know, until you've exhausted your obsession with it, basically. So you get artists doing series of paintings on the same thing, or sculptures or whatever they're into. Or, or people writing books and they'll be kind of the same subjects. But this is very different because the first book I wrote was a romantic thriller comedy. <laughs> then the next book I wrote was a, sci a dystopian science fiction book. They were two adult books. This book is going to be a book for kids. Or adults with big kids as well, because we all have a big kid in us, don't we? And one of the nicest things you can do as an adult is reread your favorite books that you had when you were a kid. So my favorite books were things like Wind in the Willows, a Graham Greene book. Graham Greene, Graham Greene is he? Well, Green is his second name. I'm not sure if it's Graham is his first name. He is Wind in the Willows, anyway. And uh, Winnie the Pooh. And books, basically, that had animals in them, I seem to like. And books with illustrations. And I started doing a lot of stuff that was more in the vein of illustration than fine art. Uh, la uh, I think it was last year now, probably. Yeah, it was last year. Because I remember doing an end of year review, showing a sketchbook, and there was a lot of stuff in it that was from an illustration, very short illustration course that I did, which kind of started the whole thing on. And I took to it like a duck to water because I like writing, you see, and I like um, narratives and stories and daydreaming about things and everything. You know, it brings, it's that creative side of me just loves that kind of thing. Not every artist works that way, but, you know, I go with the flow of whatever is kind of freeing me up creatively or with the direction I'm wanting to go in anyway. I have my drawing to refer to for this painting, but I also have the photo to work from and a, and a video to work from as well but I'm working mostly from this um it's a gouache painting really and a, a photo of the same scene and then the rest of my imagination you fill up the gap with your imagination so my imagination is going to be able to run right in the book because I, I don't think it's going to be a hugely difficult project for me because the story was there. Because what happened was I had the ants that I was thinking I had some little wood lice and, and uh, springtails in the terrariums, couple of terrariums I had made. I was drawing all the terrariums and drawing all the little insects in them very happily and having a great time doing that. Really enjoyed it and the live streams are still there and some of the work is still there. I even made a couple of shorts on it. But uh, I sort of didn't feel, I, I, I sort of felt I should be doing something a bit, you know, more outdoorsy and landscapey as well. The minute I got a bit of weather, so I made sure to get out and about when I got the weather. 
but it was still going around my mind about the terrarium stuff. And I had been researching keeping ants because I have so many ants in the garden and I find them so interesting. I had a book on leaf cutter ants there that I read a while back and I loved it. And their their little ant societies are so interesting. So I was very interested in that. And I, I was thinking of keeping ants, wanted to research it properly before I decided. But I, in the meantime, had an invasion of ants where I was out poking around some of the ant hills in the garden. <laughs> and I have a few different types of ants in the garden, it turns out. And I inadvertently uh, started a little bit of a riot. And how that happened was I have a, a Laces, Laces Niger ants, black garden ants, are one of the type of ants that I have. And I got a queen. So to start a colony, you have to have a queen. And the only reason I took the queen from where she was is she was trying to wander into the house. And that was because I had pulled up as I was investigating where the ants were and watching them and everything. I casually pulled up a dandelion root that was beside the side door of my house. And next thing you know, all these ants, it looked like millions of ants suddenly running out of it. Uh, uh, quite a huge clutch of male ants with uh, their winged ones, you know. They came running out of it. And I went, oh my God, they all went straight into the house because I, I said, why are they going into the house? Oh no, the queen was at the front of them. So the queen had panicked, come out of the nest, run into the house and they were all following her. So I had this big invasion. And of course, when I started trying to throw them out, they started trying to attack me. So uh, I said, oh, my goodness, what will I do? So I could, couldn't get them out of the house. So I put the queen in a test tube jar. Right? And was it a test tube or just a jar? Because I bought test tubes afterwards thinking I was going to have an ant colony. So. I did that and said, well, OK, I don't want to kill the colony. I'll have to take everybody left in the colony and have that as my ant colony because workers don't live that long without their queen. But I had also done research online, discovered that uh, each, although black garden ants have a queen, each there can be a few nests near each other and I saw more than one queen around the place. So I said, well, maybe some of the workers, another nest will take some of the workers and everything. So I was struggling with this problem for a couple of days and feeding the ants and everything inside in the middle of all this. It was all very weird, you know. I'm not focusing on this painting properly because I'm telling you about this, but when the live stream is over, I'll get more into the session but so far I, at least I've established that hotter kind of green it's zoomier slightly zoomier looking fair now I'm going to mix up a different ochre color for that hill on the left hand side of the painting and use a fan brush so that's about as exciting as that's going to get but the ant story was very exciting so that's why this is a podcast <laughs> that you can listen to <laughs> Because it, although it's all creative and, you know, it is painterly as well, because the book is going to be about the story about the ants, how I resolved the problem. And it involves making a cozy ant house for them, you see, and putting it back on top of their original ant hill so that they're nice and covered again and persuading them to move back in to their aunt house and I had to go like it's a real story in a way because I had to go and place the the queen back and do various settling down things with them and uh, some of the settling down things are very weird uh, like putting them in the fridge for a little while to calm them down you know 
<laughs> I think that's is that cruel? I went through this crisis of asking myself, is you know, is what I'm doing cruel? Or, you know, am I giving them room enough to be able to forage or to be able to just walk around in if I have them indoors? I decided at the end of the at the end of the whole experience that I did, just didn't feel right about keeping ants, you know, no matter how good my intentions were with them. And I would prefer to be able to observe them in their natural environment. So they ended up with a cosy ant house, which they they don't use all the time, but which they will quite happily walk in and out of, uh, in in situ, on top of where their uh, little village, if you like, is their little ant village. So I haven't disturbed the village anymore. But I have added a few things on top of the village. So they have a cosy ant house. They have a stone circle, which is a traditional sort of a druid's circle that you have all these uh, stones around and people or ants gather at them and toast marshmallows while the sun sets and things like that. Very nice places to have picnics and marshmallow toasting gatherings and they've got picnic tables they have uh me giving them i'm terribly sorry about disturbing your ant nest offerings of food and things at the picnic table several times a week and these include little tiny uh, jars of jam and honey which they love in little picnic baskets they've got picnic blankets as well they've got a little ladder to help them climb up the ivy they may be getting a lake in the near future but they're also getting a book about them because i had so much fun the few uh illustrations really that i've done so far i had so much fun doing them that and i have such a nice little story that i think i'd really enjoy doing a few more illustrations for the story and some of the restrictions that there are on the design of the book, which I'm doing with um, a company I work with already on my little Etsy shop to do printing stuff. The design of the book, the constraints that there are on that design is actually helping me to come up with new ideas for the book. Like uh, one of the constraints is that the book has to have at a minimum 30 pages, which is a huge amount for a kid's book, isn't it? You know, you would think in a kid's book, if it had 10, 15 pages, you'd be quite happy with that because uh, it's a little, a little story is enough for a little kid unless you're doing, say, Wind in the Willows or something like that. That's a book that a parent has to commit to reading to a child every night for, you know, maybe a week or two. It's a big commitment these days, really. So a lot of kids' books, little kids' books, which this, I kind of see it as a book that could be a little kid's book, because when you think about it, it's a horrible expression, but in marketing, they have this expression, the target market, as if you're going to shoot your customers or something. But you want to know who you're selling to, so you have an idea about um, what kind of person might like to read your book. So I'm, I'm saying, yeah, I think kids would like this story the way I want to write it and the way I want to illustrate it. Kids would like it, I think. But... It's also parents that buy it, you see, buy the book. So a lot of people my age, who could be people's uh, grandparents, right, or even parents, maybe not so much in this generation of parents now. I think it's gone a bit out. It'll come back in fashion, you know, but it was a little bit out of fashion. Uh, there's a style of illustration that is very 1930s to 50s and it's Wind in the Willows stuff, it's uh, Winnie the Pooh stuff, it's 
and it is earlier, it's from an earlier tradition of botanical drawing, really. Uh, I've been very interested in that sort of stuff since uh, being a kid myself and looking at older books, you know. Um, but well, that's not quite what I thought today. It's a bit more subtle than that, the brush stroke. I have my, I have my colour I want on, but I don't have the kind of brush stroke that I want. I want to make the colour on the left side of the hill have some very earthy elements in it. So, if you don't know the style, I mean, I was trying to find the exact thing I was looking for on my Pinterest today. I have a Pinterest account, which has done Emerald Art as well. And I didn't link to it underneath here because it comes up with the Irish version of the website, but I suppose if you look it up, it comes up for whatever your region is. But I have a whole section of pinned, it, it, it's, it's good for artists, Pinterest, because you can make pinned boards. And they're like idea boards, you know, where you keep stuff that you like looking at and that inspires you. So I had on that, I had a lot of botanical illustration. And one of the things I had was, actually, this is kind of good that I'm talking and painting because it's making me be very casual about the way I'm putting down the paint, which might not be bad. Because I'm at the slightly frightened of the paint uh, stage of the painting now. I also have a cup of tea going, which I don't want to forget. So the style that I liked of uh, book, really, illustration was this very clever uh, thing from, I think it was the 19th century, from a lady who li clearly liked to do botanical stuff and kept either a botanical journal of some sort or, you know, was doing a kind of a study, bit of a scientific study of plants and doing her little watercolours and things like that of plants. And some of those, that generation of, a lot of them were female painters, were so good at what they did. They really were so good at what they did. They just blow me away. But this particular person who whose image I couldn't find when I went looking for it today was doing a, she did a book and she had all the beautiful plants beautifully painted in watercolours, but hand wrote the book as well. That's what I want to do because I have a very simple story that can be simplified down to uh, be short enough to be able to hand write it, but hand write it as part of the illustrations because what happens with some of these books the printers I'm working with, the book isn't uh, specifically designed to be a book format. It's a photo book format. So really, it's a photo album, printing a photo album for you. It'll allow you to put some text in, but it's not designed for the purposes I'm using. It for. And I find a lot of the time when I'm doing anything Designy, and I've done a lot of designs at this stage this year. Is there's a lot of design going on this year? I've done various notebooks and stickers and things like that. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, I find that the constraints that the thing not really suiting my medium puts on me are helpful constraints because they make me think outside the box and actually help me to solve problems by coming up with an even better idea so my original idea hadn't included the idea of having a cut out ant house cozy ant house in the book but because it has the book needs to have 30 pages I thought well what can I do with the extra pages if that's a constraint and uh, I thought well the sort of books I love you know as an adult <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it. I find it amusing that I still get as much fun out of these things as I did when I was a kid, except I can afford to buy them when I want to. 
the things I enjoyed were cut out and make things. And these days you get a lot of stickers instead of cut it out yourself things. But with this book, uh, the sort of paper that's in it, it's not, there's no sticker option in it. So the whole look of the book would really suit this retro look. It's, I discovered recently that the kind of stuff I really like is actually has a kind of a trending name and it's cottage core, it's called cottage core, but it's an aesthetic and that's the name for the aesthetic. So I really am a cottage core woman because <laughs> I love that whole aesthetic of old world stuff and uh, coziness and very uh, outdated now stuff. But it's very, it's it's found this whole new appeal with young people. They find it very soothing and comforting in the way that uh, slow the slow living trend has become popular as well. I am delighted to see these things because things like handcrafts, there's a resurgence of those things coming back. So it's wonderful. So the style of book that I want to do is very retro, you know, but I think kids would love it. And I think that it, an adult buying for a kid would, would love to buy that as a gift as well, that kind of a book. And this idea of having a section where a kid can do cut out, a cut out cozy ant house of their own after reading the story and seeing what the ant house looks like and everything, and then can have pages for designing their own cozy ant house or a cozy ant house accessories. And I can even do little draw some little drawings on some of those blank pages just to get people started ideas wise about like say one of the pages will have materials you will need uh, scissors cardboard glue and i'll draw little pictures of scissors cardboard glue in a really cute style you see so it gives me the opportunity to make everything very visual even the writing so the writing will be just hand done writing some Maybe, you know, my very inexpert copper plate calligraphy and so um, just in, in capital letters, you know, spaced in a way that they look cute. So uh, it's, it's, I think it's, it's reasonably easy to do. Uh, but the bit where the difficulty might arise would be getting the scale correct. Because if I am handwriting text, I need to know how big the thing comes out for the final print, the template, if you like. And there is a template I can download so I can draw up a few different size texts and uh, then print them out at the correct scale that the book is going to be at just to visually eyeball it to see if I if it's legible properly you know so but the text will be part of the look of the book so it has the book will have a very hand done cute retro feel to it but I think that a kid will like that very much because uh, the topic of the book is cute little world that actually you could investigate yourself terribly easy if you have a garden, you see. And kids love animals, don't they? And insects and things like that. So uh, time scale for, I don't think it'll, you, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think it should take me all that long. The first sketches I did uh, that I have in my sketchbook that are going in as finished pieces in the book, they're, they weren't, they didn't take me very long to do. So what the plan is, is that I'm going to work on the two projects kind of uh, interchangeably. This painting, I'm going to work on it kind of every second day or so 
to stay in contact with it. And the book, I'm going to work on it every second day or so. And I like that idea because I've got this landscape, which is a bigish project for me. This is even though, you know, physically it's a small piece. I find oil paintings kind of a big project in a way. And I've got this piece to work on, which is very not being very focused this morning but it is a very focused kind of activity and tiring you know I find oil painting can be tiring because it's not super easy and this I have mental blocks I think about you know how free I am with it and because it just never works out for me if I'm if I go into an oil painting with a very free approach so there's a certain amount of control has to happen in an oil painting but um, that doesn't really in a sketch pad. So I'm going to work on that and then, you know, have like, say you're doing three, three and a half hours on this in a session. Then the next day I'll come along and I'll have a nice, uh, fun illustration day working on the book, you see, and doing a bit of writing and all that. and. Uh, I think that's going to be, although I might seem a bit all over the place trying to talk about two different kinds of projects here while painting. <laughs> a good balancing act, isn't it, to be able to do. I think that those two things will complement each other and they won't clash because I think one activity is going to help the other activity very much. And... The fact is, they came up naturally together, you know. So it's not, I don't think it's a um, sort of too scattered thing to do to be able to hold it together. Because that's the thing, isn't it? Focus is a funny thing. You need focus. You need good focus in art. And to get through any kind of a short or long art project, you do, obviously. But... You also need a certain amount of freeing up of yourself to happen, you know? But it, it's like, you know, you're trying to, a certain amount of control you want to put on the whole operation. And then there's this, you know, if you get too tight about it, then you go, no, no, I want to loosen up a bit again. So it's all, it's a fine balancing act, you know, trying to get it right. I'm going to put a bit more pink in at the sky here now on this paint. See how it looks against the brighter green that we've put in. So I love that idea. And then the next upload that I do, I usually try and upload things on a Friday. And I had been doing things on a rough schedule of about every two weeks for uploads. But, uh, you know, um, humans are not machines. So sometimes I have uh, more videos going up and in summer I tend to get a lot more energy even though it's so dark today I have to have lights on and everything and we haven't had good weather. I still have a lot more energy. So I am doing more more work. So more work equals more uploads for stuff I want to show you guys that I'm working on because I want you to get creative ideas yourself bouncing off another artist getting creative ideas you see that's kind of my aspiration if you like for the channel I want to uh, get people enthusiastic about creativity which is I, I would think anybody who has an art channel is going to want to be doing that But uh, what a fun project that's going to be. So maybe I do like to set deadlines. So, you know, it gives me something to work with. And I envisage myself being able to do that little book in a few weeks kind of thing. I'm usually, I usually finish things way before the deadline. Because... Uh, I, I don't know how many exactly how many pages the story is going to take to tell, you know. I've got to write the story down and I'm probably going to be might be writing and drawing at the same time, but the next video upload will be about that. 
because I think that it's very nice when you have different ways of presenting your art to people. And we do, I know I said I was doing a very retro book and everything, but we live in a modern world with different ways of doing things and so many different uh, mediums that you can present your work to people in. It's not about just waiting for somebody to go to a gallery to see your work. That might be a bit too pink. I don't know. Okay, I'll put in a bit and then see how we feel about it. But I thought about this and I thought, well, you know, I want people who are non-artists to sort of see the point of art and see that art is in everything in life. You know, creativity is in everything in life. But there's still a, there are still a lot of people who say, well, what is art good for? They have a very utilitarian view about the function of art. And it's interesting to note that a lot of psychologists would argue that art is as vital to your spirit as food. One of my books actually had that as a theme in it the, about the the nature of art and it was you know really only at the end of the book that 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 became obvious that that was one of the whole points of the book that after you have after you have eaten and have a roof over your head what are your other needs well your other needs are to have your kind of spiritual if you like needs fulfilled and art does that your all your dreaming capacities and imaginative creative capacities are so important in your life because they give you your sense of wonder in life and everything so it's very good to feed those and most people know that and so they go and they buy like books for their children and they delight in their children's creativity and interest and stories and everything but sometimes we forget when we grow up I think because people are terribly busy working and trying to make money, trying to keep the roof over their heads, the what you call the gross needs of life can be so demanding on you that you tend to think, well, the other things don't matter because they're not on the high importance part of the list, are they? But they are. They're terribly important. So if you come home from, de you know, depressed after a day's work and say, what's the point if this is what life is about, being tired all the time, and you've got a beautiful picture, on you, that helps, you know. Different people have a different version of what that consists of or looks like, but it does help. Or if your house looks nice or cosy or comfy, you know. That helps. I'm liking that pink a lot. Yes, that's starting to come together. Yeah, it's nice to see projects coming together, isn't it? We're going to pick up that colour in other places, you see. And really, those two topics, the book and the painting, they're very different. One was talking about something very, very small, cosy ant house. And the other thing was talking about a big panoramic landscape. And one is talking about a book and one is talking about a painting. And one was talking about illustration and the other is talking about fine art. But they're both creative endeavours and they feed into each other. And then your sort of interest in the natural world feeds into that as well because you sort of see the point of doing these things and the point of taking delight in them as well. So I shall take delight in designing that book. And the thing I like about it as well, I'm just going around the, sorry, I'm just to explain what, how I'm thinking about the painting now, I'm going around the painting with this greyish pink I've mixed up I've got the pink established in the sky now. Um, 
So there's a warm summer glow in that sky now. And I'm bringing the pink onto the mountain, the mid ground, and now onto the mount other mountains in the background. So linking the whole thing up, just like my illustration work and writing a little, another little book. Um, to go with these illustrations that all links up uh, with it's not like a disjointed kind of creativity it might be in a different medium but it is the same processes and they should feed each other okay and they should I should be able to work on one and the other as well in a fairly in a way that's um, one is helping the other, I think. And already this painting is coming along. So I'm happy with today's session. I hope you saw the color better today and hopefully even the resolution is slightly better because the lighting level is better today really. And I hope you like the idea of illustration illustrating a handwritten book fun isn't it it's like going back to being a kid a lot of being an artist is bringing out the big kid and you okay folks well that was uh my bonus bonus live stream and podcast if you just wanted to listen so I'll see you as usual for the Friday live and I'll probably be working on this on the Friday, but there will be uh, probably an upload of me working on the book idea. Hopefully I'll, I'll put that up on Friday because I plan to do some work on that tomorrow. So I might film it. So wish me luck in getting some good work done tomorrow. Bye bye.